you to the Winter Sports Banquet. Um, I think it comes at a, a fantastic day as today was one of the nicest days we've had certainly all year. Um, I hear that when I was in Italy the weather was like 55 and 60, but it's hard for me to believe that when I come back it's 12 below. So, excellent day to wrap up the winter sports season. Uh, I just first wanted to thank all the coaches that uh, helped out and did a fantastic job. So, uh, excellent job coaches, thank you. Uh, and also thanks to everybody else who had helped out, whether it be scorekeeping or getting water, anything, any way you helped out in the uh, winter sports season, I truly appreciate it. To start off with tonight, we're going to start off with Mr. Pavlovic and the bowling program. I can tell you that it's a lot easier speaking in my classroom than it is up in front of everybody, but I will try and do my best. I would like to recognize all of our bowlers on our bowling team. I'd like to say that we had such a great time this season. Uh, although we didn't get to uh, play any schools, we did uh, play a match against the faculty, and we also played a match against, I split up the, the team into two groups and we played against each other. So we had a really good time. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, announce the um, participation awards and uh, when you come up here, just come get your award. Uh, Billy Fanning. <laughs> Leo Zhang. <laughs> um, the person responsible for our Prezi and very helpful to us, Jared Cade. <laughs> Andrew Lannon. <laughs> Logan Fagan. John Cave. I don't know I'm going to mess his last name up. We'll just say Connor O. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch showed up. Yeah. So that was our bowling team. We, uh, again, this year we had more bowlers on a regular basis. We had such a good time. Um, but I'd also like uh, to recognize some special bowlers. For our best bowler who scored the highest overall average, uh, I'd like to uh, give that award to Billy Fanning. This one was a hard one uh, to give out because we had so many bowlers that improved. In fact, I would say that everybody that started the bowling team improved, but this person, uh, I can't believe how much he improved from the very first game that he bowled. But that would be Leo Zhang. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, we have the Eagle Award. And this is uh, given to students who not only um, do a great job in whatever sport they're playing, but it's also for uh, their participation, showing up all the time, having a good attitude. Um, I would say that these two guys did a great job. I couldn't give it to one person because these two guys really uh, showed sportsmanship and so the Eagle Award goes to Jared Cave and Logan Fagan. And that's it for bowling. I'm looking forward to next year and uh, hope a lot of students uh, that didn't bowl this, this year will join next year. Thank you. Now it said the uh, students beat the staff, but they had that Mr. Thomas. I don't know how we lost. I was shocked. Um, next, wrestling Mr. Adele and Mr. O'Keefe. 
to gain and maintain a superior position. And that is wrestling. You know, it is a very physical, demanding sport. And, uh, you know, to stay out for the whole year was very difficult. It's a long season, and I commend these boys that have done this. They, they did really well this year. Uh, there's a lot of thanks. You know, I could thank everybody all day, but mainly the faculty, the staff, and the students. Thank you for the support for being out there. And, and watching us and helping us out. We really do appreciate it. And then of course, uh, you know, I, I want to thank uh, Coach O'Keefe. He did really well uh, for me. And especially, there were students that didn't even belong in, in wrestling and would come out and do his, his physical fitness workout. And uh, so he did really well and he's, he helped uh, tremendously. So let's just start out with the letter winners, okay? <laughs> And we're going to do it by weight class, because that's how we do it in wrestling. All right, first wrestler, Nick Chen, Jr., 113 pounds, from Guangzhou, China. Just come on down. If we have so many, if you want to wait for your applause until the end. Is he in the kitchen? Come on, Nick. Are you asleep? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next is a, a, a 132 senior. Yeah. Follow directions. Come and stay right here. Next is a senior 132 pound from Columbus, Ohio, Colin Rinaldi. Yeah. He did the majority of the matches, but he did go play some basketball too. But that's okay, the other sport. Paul Kubert, a uh, uh, freshman at 138 pounds from Michigan, Ohio. Yeah. Marty Martin Yi, a sophomore, 138 pounds from Beijing, China. Jeff Lee, a senior, 145 pounds uh, from Kuming, China. Tyler Ross, a senior, 152 pounds from New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Avery Koslick, sophomore, 152 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. He's from Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Lu Lu, senior, 160 pounds, yeah. Shenzhen, China. Griffin Crowley, Jr., 195 pounds, Cleveland, Ohio. Woo! Eli Hunt, Sr., 220 pounds, Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you. Heavyweight, Scott Sander, Jr., Chicago, Illinois. These are all first-year lettermen. One more. Big Ben Triozzi. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is your 2013-14 wrestling team. Okay, now with that, I'll give you Coach O'Keefe, and he's going to give out the awards. All right, so just to uh, reiterate a couple of things that Coach Rydell already said, wrestling is an incredibly physically demanding sport. Give our guys one more round of applause for sticking it out, I'll see you. So this first award uh, that we're giving out is going to one of the most dedicated individuals at this school that I've met thus far. Um, he stuck it out all year, never wrestled a day in his life before he came here. Struggled at first, picked it up as we went along. Uh, he had this incredible talent for 
As soon as his back hit the mat, he would just immediately flip over and get onto his stomach, and that it's just a crucial skill. But um, our Eagle Award this year, just do whatever we asked him to do. It was the Avery Coslin. Uh, so as you can see, this is, uh, is going to be a dual award. Um, again, two wrestlers, international wrestlers, uh, never knew anything about the sport. Showed up every day regardless of uh, timeliness. Their punctuality was sometimes in question. But did whatever we asked them, uh, asked of them all year. Never complained too much. Uh, <laughs> But uh, the progression from the beginning of the year until the end of the year was something I've never seen before. So we'd like to give most improved wrestlers to Jeff Lee and Louie Lou. Alright, and last but certainly not least, we have our most valuable player. This young man is Again, a uh, very dedicated individual. Tried his best. Unfortunately, the last match we had got picked up by a kid who might have outweighed him by, by about 15 pounds. Thrown on the ground, ended up busting his knee. But throughout the season, always first one up in the weight room, uh, motivating everyone else to, to be their best. Always at campus service. Did whatever we asked him to do. Most valuable player was Adventure Hills. did their bit, really stuck it out in campus service, motivated by beach bodies for spring break. Uh, you might be able to guess, we have Grant Huffman, we have Zach Riemann Schneider, Pedro Fernandez, and Billy Fanning. For those beach body guys, uh, you guys did an excellent job. When I was up there just to see you three, not exactly a sight to see exercising, but you guys did a great job. And I used to question who would win in a wrestling match with Cordell or O'Keefe? Cordell runs his mouth, I've been doing it to Valentine for years, but can he win, Mr. O'Keefe? No. Yeah. He knows a lot more than me. He does know a lot more than you. I pitch pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I can't stress enough, it is a physical, uh, physically demanding sport. It is a sport that I've always admired because you don't think two minutes is a long time until you're wrestling for two minutes. And to watch our guys wrestle for two minutes and understand that they weren't in the best of shape, it, it, but uh, they never stopped and they never quit wrestling, so uh, excellent job to the wrestling team. Uh, I just wanted to thank Mrs. Thomas for putting together this PowerPoint so that way you can get a, a visual of the success that our boys have faced uh, over the winter season. So without further ado, lead to our, our next two, uh, Mr. Lung and, and Coach Sullivan. Um, so we're going to start out with the JV basketball team. Um, I was kind of looking for, for things to say tonight. Um, I was talking with Mr. Singer in the office today. And he said the quote, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Um, and obviously the JV team did more losing than we did winning this year. Um, but I was very proud of how the guys rebounded after every loss and uh, felt that they really brought a, just a great attitude to practice every day. Um, especially late in the year, we had a lot of frustrating losses. Um, the, the morale was starting to dip a little bit, but some days of practice we had more JV guys than varsity. Um, and I don't say that to, to knock varsity because they had very good attendance, but it's just to show how how much um, the JV guys wanted to be in the gym, how much they wanted to improve, and really that their attitude was great um, throughout the entire season. Our second to last game really sums up the progress that our guys made as players throughout the course of the year. Uh, we played New Day Academy, who had beaten us by about 50 back in December. Very good team, one of the best JV teams we, we had on our schedule. 
we, we played them very tough, got down early, came back, uh, tied the game up near the end of the third quarter, ended up losing by about four. Uh, they hit some late free throws to pull away a little bit. But to make up a 50-point deficit from the game in the beginning of the season to the end is, is pretty remarkable. Um, and I just think it's testament to the hard work they put in and um, should give them a round of applause right now. Without further ado, I want to recognize the JV team with uh, participation certificates. Anybody who played in half the JV games is going to get a certificate. Um, and also the guys that joined us late, as long as you joined the team and were really a key member of the team and, and devoted until the end of the season, you'll also be receiving a certificate. Or a certificate. There are a couple guys that did play JV that won't be recognized with this group. Um, you will be receiving boards along with the varsity team, so don't, so don't worry, you'll get, you'll get your award. When I call you to the stage, uh, get your work from Coach Sullivan and then stay up here for the team picture. Also, if you want to hold off in the applause until the end, that'd be good. To start us off, uh, we'll have our lone freshman, Jared Hill, come to the stage. Yeah! Uh, next, Pedro Fernandez. Uh, next up, we have Jason Ginsberg. Um, Dylan Porter. Next. Uh, our next player is Dmitry Shevikov. Uh, moving on to the juniors, Gary Leslie. Next up on the juniors list is John Richardson. Um, to start the seniors, we have Austin Apt. Next up, we have uh, our homeschool player to play with us, Morgan Franz. Colin Rinaldi. And last but not least, our Korean sensation, Jay Yoon. Receiving this award really exemplified um, what I talked about earlier, getting in the gym, always working on your game, always being positive, always keeping your head up after tough losses. Um, because one of our captains, I think he did a fantastic job all year being a leader, and that is Elpidio Amusu. Next up is the most improved award. This one is probably the hardest for me to uh, choose, simply because a lot of guys made really great strides over the course of the season um, and really worked on their game. Uh, the person receiving this award, I think especially, uh, I saw some great strides with him throughout the year. Um, he, he turned into one of our, our better players and more skilled players by the end of the season, and he had no basketball experience, or virtually none, coming into the year. Um, this award goes to Dmitry Shevikov. So the next award, typically we give out an offensive and a defensive um, most outstanding player. However, I thought two guys really stuck out in my mind this year for being doing great work on the defensive end. Um, so I'm going to honor those two guys uh, with both with Defensive Player of the Year awards. Um, I can say similar things about both, so I'll just kind of kill two birds with one stone. Both of these guys hustled, um, gave 110% anytime they were out on the court. In games, uh, anytime they were playing defense in practice, and frankly, half of playing defense is just giving 110% and outworking whatever player you're guarding. Um, 
Those two players are John Richardson and Pedro Fernandez. Finally, our MVP award. Um, this player was just a very steady presence for us, no matter if we were up by 10, down by 20, um, no matter if it was the first play of the game or the last play in the fourth quarter. He was just rock solid all season, uh, played a lot of points for us, also was great on the defensive end. That MVP is Jason Ginsburg. Yeah. Without further ado, I'll hand over to Coach Sullivan for the varsity members. Uh, good evening. I'll try to make this short. I know it's the last one. I know uh, second time up here, I'll, I'll learn from mistakes the first time. First off, I want to hand out some thank yous um, to a lot of people that have been a big help this year. Um, first off, uh, Mr. Vines and Mr. Sharping for giving me this opportunity. I know Coach Long and I are both very young, new teachers, trusted us, and we had a lot of fun with it. Um, I'd also thank uh, Mr. Lum for his help as assistant coach and also uh, Mr. Valentine. He stepped in a few times and was actually unable to help out uh, because of an injury, but he was a great help to the team when we needed him. One guy that I'd also like to thank, um, he's actually getting an award later, but is Rick Key. Um, Rick put in a lot of hours into the team, but got little to no recognition um, because that's just what managers do sometimes. He's a big help, took care of stats. Um, it was one less thing that I had to worry about. He always knew where and when he had to be, and he did both the JV and the varsity. So he was focusing two times as much as a normal player was. So it was pretty good. So thank you, Ricky. Um, then the other two people I'd like to thank are Grandma for doing all of our laundry and the maintenance staff. Um, it was a big help to have the uniforms washed and ready the next morning. Um, I know it took a lot off Coach Lum and I's shoulders and it was a big help. So thank you Grandma and the maintenance staff for doing the laundry. And the other one is Jimmy, who, if you know or have played in our gym, you know how dusty it can get at times. It's an ice skating rink and it hasn't been mopped in a few days. So Jimmy took it upon himself to mop it every other day. So thank you very much to Jimmy. I know he's not here, but the maintenance staff and all did a great job of preparing the gym this year. So thank you guys. Okay, so quick summary of the season. Um, basketball season was a tough one, A, because it's winter and it's long. Um, long and cold, but because I was coaching basketball, um, basketball season was actually a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, at no point during coaching basketball did it ever feel like a job. I was enjoying myself 100% of the time. Um, and I think that is because of the students here at Grand River. Um, I was having a blast coaching them. You know, games were fun. Um, and it was also awesome to see all the faculty in the stands. So you guys were a really big support for the students, so thank you for that. Grand River basketball is a little bit different than the basketball that I came from because you're all from all over around the world. So to start off, many of you have never played basketball with each other, unlike normal public schools where you have feeder systems and some programs. But I think that made for an interesting dynamic to the year. So to start off, team meshed really well, um, but then we went on this thing called Thanksgiving break. So normal high schools, you practice during that time, but we didn't. So our first test afterwards was AOA. AOA ended up winning the league, so it was a bit of a challenge for us, but we persevered through that. Then we got on a hot streak and we went into winter break, uh, over 500. Winter break was, I mean, another two weeks of not having any practice or anything, but we came back together, uh, persevered through that. So um, at the end of the season, uh, we finished with a record of nine and eight. Um, very proud of the guys because they took it upon themselves to do what many thought they could. I don't remember the faculty member or whoever said this um, at the beginning of the year, but I sort of took it upon myself to let the guys know the hopes weren't high for us. At one point, I don't remember if somebody said it or if it was a student, but they said, you'll be lucky to go 500 this season. And I said, we're gonna easily go over 500. Um, at one point, we were nine and five. We didn't finish the season off the way we wanted to, but I'm still very proud of the way we finished. We finished fourth in the conference and we finished with the record of nine and eight. So good job, basketball guys. All right, uh, the first people I'm gonna call up are certificate winners. Uh, 
Uh, now to the end of the awards. Um, this is something I believe uh, very strong in, that these, uh, these gentlemen that won awards um, deserve them. They were voted on by their teammates, um, so no favorites or anything like that were played. But if you want an award, you want it for a good reason. So the first one is the most improved. Uh, this award goes to somebody that was dedicated, came to every single practice. Rarely did he miss a practice. He was a question mark whether I wanted to put him on JV or varsity at the beginning, but I loved his attitude and I loved his enthusiasm. Um, ended up being a great addition and ended up excelling towards the end of the season and actually helped us out in the Fuchs game with probably six deals in a period of a minute and a half. And the award goes to Isaac Seager Brown. Next award goes to a player that I knew I could always count on um, for defense. My style of coaching is I like to play high intensity, full court press, trapping zone defense. Um, I knew I could always count on this player to be at the top of that, which is where you have the most activity and you get the most steals. The award goes to a sophomore who has a lot of potential, Michael Amendola. The next award goes to the Offensive Player of the Year. Um, this player is, was a huge help, excelled, but at the beginning of the year, it was all about getting his confidence up. But towards the end of the year, you couldn't stop him. You could throw the ball down at the paint, and you could count on two points from him. He was a dynamite rebounder, um, just all effort. Uh, if he hits the weight room, he'll definitely be dunking by next year. You now it's sometimes a little bit of a question mark with him. But he had some outstanding games with double doubles, right, easy, no problem. Uh, the award goes to John Butler. Woo! The final award is Eagle Award. Like everybody said, um, it's based off of leadership. Um, this award, this, these were the requirements that I wrote down on the sheet when everybody was filling it out. Uh, this award is given to the athlete in basketball based off of their leadership, their character, being a positive role model as a citizen of Grand River with no violations of the athletic code in addition to their athletic ability. This player was a wonderful addition. He easily could have won any of the other awards, the offensive or the defensive or MVP of the year, but I think his leadership and his role model skills on the basketball court yeah, led him to this uh, award. It's awesome that he's in my advice. I love emailing his mother, hearing all the positive stories and telling her um, how well he's doing in basketball. Uh, so congratulations, Ben Rashad. Yeah. Thanks for a great season, and uh, now, Mr. Sharp. Now I just had to give out a, a few awards, um, some of the all-conference awards from our uh, meeting that I was at last week, and just a couple of awards just to express my uh, sense of gratitude and um, just thanks. Um, the first one, as Sully already kind of touched on, was Rick Key. Uh, Rick was a player for Valentine and myself last year, but even at the end of last year, he told himself, you know, I'm not the greatest basketball player. He's not going to lie to himself. Um, so he was offering to apply for the manager position. And so it was tough between him and another person to get the manager position, but Ricky just did an awesome job. He never cut book last year. Um, he would always do attendance. He would do anything that we asked him. Uh, he was great to hang out with out at, uh, at the scorer's table. And I know that he'd watch over Valentine if I wasn't able to be there. So we're gonna give an honorary letter to Ricky. <laughs> That's my first time taking a picture, it wasn't really. And, and the second one goes to a, a person who's been dedicated to the basketball program for two years and uh, unfortunately injury, illness, whatever you want to call it, took him out for about a month uh, uh, play this year. But uh, I want to appreciate him just simply because he uh, did the, the pregame announcements and that was kind of his thing. He had bugged me all last year, bugged me at the beginning of this year. This is where his passion is and we look forward to hearing your voice in the future. So honorary letter goes to Leo Goldman. Um, all conference awards, all academic, uh, first team, um, you had to have a 3.5 and we had three individuals who met the requirements. Like I said 3.5 plus playing um, a very difficult sport in basketball long season, so these gentlemen deserve a round of applause. <laughs>